there are people. I am live. <laughs> Hello, 10 people that have joined me thus far. All right, welcome everybody who's watching this either live or watching it archived, because it will eventually be archived if you miss anything or want to watch it again for some odd reason. I am continuing my build of the Lego Saturn V. So to recap, We've done this. <laughs> We've done the first stage. Um, I took two of the fins off just so I can lie it flat um, without breaking it. But we've got the uh, we've got the first stage done. I, this is still my favorite little detail is just how rad the engines look from the from the inside. Um, and we are working on the second stage. So here's the second stage. This is how much we have built so far. Not a whole lot. Um, so today I think we're going to be starting with the skin on this and then hopefully maybe attaching it to the upper or the first stage which is going to be a little bit tough mainly because hey everyone I don't really know where I'm going to store it in my house um, and also I want to point out you guys all commented that one of these is on upside down the other day I fixed it I fixed it okay so we're gonna we're gonna work on that so those of you who are just joining, welcome. Um, this is the manual and it is very long and we were roughly about here. We are looking for bag eight. We are on bag eight of 12, so we have passed the halfway point. Um, I wanna thank you guys for coming to hang out with me while I do this, uh, oops, wrong side. Um, cause I thought it would be kind of fun to, and entertaining to share this with you guys cause I know this kit has been ridiculously hard to get a hold of. Um, those of you who missed my first episode on this, I actually wasn't unable to get one myself and uh, lovely fan Chris donated one to the cause. So thanks Chris again. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it is tough to find and I wanted to share this with you guys so that you can all kind of see what it looks like. Okay, uh, let's get bags eight and nine out because we're gonna do, we're gonna do it multiples, for sure multiples. Um, Pete? I don't know where Pete is. So Pete is my cat. Those of you who are new to Vintage Space, Pete is my cat. Pete likes to wake up and chew things like plastic. <laughs> so he'll eventually probably make an appearance. Um, it'll happen, but for the, in the meantime, bag eight. Let's get this party started. All right. Four, okay. <laughs> So as you guys know, I'm not super organized because I don't exactly have like, I'm going to try to tilt this down ever so slightly. There comes Pete. Um, so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I might have to move it even further or like physically sit up on the chair, I guess. Um, okay. There's Pete. Okay, let's get this organized. Let's get this organized. It's always easier to get organized once you're going for some reason, which like defeats the purpose of preparing, eh? But I don't know. Okay. Um, so you guys still can't see the table. That's what the most awkward part of this is, is trying to get it. Hi, Pete. Here comes Pete. Okay, there we go. Okay. So this is Pete. This is Pete Conrad, the kitten, who is going to sit on the instructions. He's going to sit on, what is it with cats knowing exactly, there's his butt, knowing exactly what it is that you're trying to get done so that they can stop you from doing it. Okay. Oh, I still can't quite. Get your face out of it. No. Come on, babe. Okay. I'm just going to close the box so he can't get his face in it. He's the best. He's the best around. I don't know the song. Um, okay. Starting with this. Pete, you're standing directly on the... No, dude. <laughs> Isn't this, isn't this what the internet is made for, guys? Just cats? I can't even... There he is. Hi. <laughs> Karate Kid. Yeah, I haven't seen Karate Kid, actually. But I have seen the, um, the episode of uh, Bob's Burgers where they sing that song in, like, the Naked Olympics montage. Ooh, careful, babe. Um, so that's my reference for it. I've always got weird, like, half references for TV things because um, most of my references come from, like, The Simpsons, which is hugely referential. Don't... No, stop. Stop. Kitten, stop. He's, there's too much stuff up here. He's gonna like, he's gonna lose it. For anyone saying that this build has been taking me too long, to be clear, I'm not building this on my own, right? Ah, no, 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 Okay. Um, I'm not building this on my own. I, uh, I'm exclusively building this live um, on YouTube for you guys. So it's not that it's taking me this long, it's that it's, um, it's that I'm, I'm only, do, I'm not doing anything else with it. Okay, we built one of these. 
Um, only one of these? Weird. Okay. Dude, don't sit on it. Don't sit on it. Be unlike Fonzie and don't sit on it. Um, okay. This goes here. This goes on one of the red bits here. Now I've got that Karate Kid song in my head. This always happens. Ah! Damn it. Hang on. I need my yellow. So oh, there we go. Okay. Hang on. I can do this. When the parts wiggle, it's awkward. So there, I put this thing, oops, sorry. Put this thing on here. Um, okay, so we are still building knobbly bits. So this is a knobbly bit. And the thin bit goes in here. That's step 182. <laughs> okay, that's that. What is happening right now? What do you think, Pete? Are you actually gonna help this time? Little hat. Okay. Okay. Wait, did I do that wrong? No, it goes this way. It goes this way, and then this way. Okay, it goes this way, and then we put a long tube Oh my god, this is so finicky. How many? I'm gonna have to do multiple of these, don't I? Obviously, that's what's gonna happen. Consarn it. Dagnab it. Okay. Pete! <laughs> Can you just like pick a little spot and sit? He's su I mean, he's supervising, but in like. I think he's like the cat equivalent of micromanaging. I just saw Fishbulb go by, which is one of my all-time favorite Simpsons references. I call people Fishbulb all the time. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, there's your answer, Fishbulb. Um, okay, so basically what we're doing is creating a long, knobbly bit of white stuff um, to go down the side of it. So that's going to run, I assume, that's going to run parallel to this, or along with this thing. Okay, so... Do, do, do. Riveting. Okay. Riveting internet content. One, two, three. Oh, wait. Two, three. Oh, four of these. Wait. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. So I missed one. Okay. Wait. Jeez. Seriously? Okay, and then put one of these bits on the end. Oop, I guess I should line all these lines up. It's got little grooves on the back. I assume I should line that up. Okay, so there's that, and then we stick one of these on the back of it, like so. Okay, then we have one of these long ones. And one of these relatively shorter ones, and we, oh. Nope, nope, I think I did something wrong there. Yep, okay, hang on. I did something wrong. Okay, so this goes up here. So this is, sorry guys, I always have to concentrate before I get back into like, the groove of building Lego on the internet. Um, I should pull up the thing again and see what questions you guys have been asking me beforehand. Um, riveting, riveting internet. Okay, so we made this thing, kind of pivots a bit, sort of. Um, should I do that right? I did that right. Yeah, okay, I did that right. All right. So then we take one of the dark... Oh, wait, nope. It's two of these claw bits. And put them on the top of this white stack. Oh, where 
rotate them so they're lined up properly. Okay, and then we take one of the small blue bits and cross it over this way. Good, okay, that. Okay, now we're gonna put some junk on this bit. Um, what's this? Um, I probably shouldn't bite that. Okay, so two of these little black hooky claws. Uh, books shipping. Books shipping. I have been traveling. Okay, I can answer that question while I look for parts. That's easy. Um, so, books shipping. I have books. They're, um, I've, I've been away is the real problem. I've been home for like three days long enough to do laundry and pack for the next trip. So, I've been, I just haven't had time to sit down and actually go through orders. So, they're going to be shipping very soon. And by very soon, I mean this week. Actually, tonight I'm going to sit down. I finally have time to sit down and write my, um, my thank you cards for Patreon patrons, um, as well as my um, send out book orders. I've got a few outstanding. I have to, I'm redoing my shop right now. I'm relaunching the shop. Okay, so we did that. Nope, yep, yep. And then, and then there's another angle bit. So I'm gonna do that tonight and get book order shipped. So once I get those sorted and get the new shop online, up and running, everything will be back back up and available and stuff, but it's really just, I have not been home long enough to actually, I have not been home long enough to do anything, um, which is why you guys may have noticed there wasn't a regular episode of Vintage Space last week. I did not have time to do it before I went to San Francisco for a week for Seeker. So um, that's, I yeah, I, I didn't have time to do it over the weekend either. Um, second camera over the table. Guys, it's my house. I don't have that kind of setup. Um, doing this. I'm trying to tilt this down so you guys can actually like kind of see it. So we did this. We did this. And it's definitely going to now tell me to do another one, isn't it? No. We take this bit. What is this? Oh, it's 100% going to be another one. No, it's not that one. Um, ah, one of these. Okay. So yeah, that's why books have not shipped yet, but they will be shipping very, very soon. They'll be shipping this week and everything will be back to normal. Um, I will have time to actually do an episode of Vintage Space tomorrow. I'm gonna shoot a bunch of stuff, so I'll have videos ready again. I'm sorry guys, it's been really, really rough. My schedule has been unrelenting recently and I'm exhausted because of it. So when I get home and I haven't, what is going on here? When I'm have been away for, you know, the better part of a month. <laughs> um, and also have other work that I have to do here and stuff. It's just, it's tough to keep things kind of together. So I've been kind of forced to take a bit of a break. Um, but I'm getting, I've got, I'm here for like, oh my God, I'm here for like three whole weeks. It's the longest I've been home. I can't remember the last time I was home for more than a week at a time. So um, I'm seeing, yeah, break the bags into different containers. Guys, I'm not that organized. <laughs> The longest time I've ever been home, period. I mean, like, you know, when I was a kid, <laughs> uh, you know, home for months and months at a time. Um, no, since I've, okay, this is step 194. Take one of these. I love these. Okay, um, take 194. Building, we're building another tubey bit. So you guys can kind of see here's where the tubey bit went. Um, okay, there's that. And then the long bit. As long as I've been home, I mean, before the last couple years. Um, can I do a split screen? No, I can't. So I'm actually streaming this on my phone, as you can tell, because streaming on your phone is so much easier. Um, so that's that's why I'm doing it the way that I am. And uh, yeah. Where's the other two? Okay, there we go. Two, okay. I saw who takes care of Pete the cat. Uh, Pete, Pete is pretty self-reliant. I mean, I take care of him. But uh, no, when I'm away, uh, Pete's pretty good at being self-sustaining. He just kind of hangs out. I leave. He's an he's an only cat. <laughs> um, He's an only cat, so I just leave him enough food and water that he'll be fine on his own. Um, and because he's not in competition with any other cats to make sure that he gets food before they do or something, um, he doesn't overeat when he's on his own. So he's actually really good about it, which is great because I'm away all the time and he's pretty chill. He just, like, when I get home, he has to, like, sit on me. He just, like, sleeps on my face. Uh, it's cute. It's fun. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, good. Um, okay. 
take one of the long, long gray bits. Yes, yeah, this one. Yep. Okay, and then stack a blue one on top of it. Um, I saw a question earlier go by. I'm trying to watch some of the questions come in, but uh, it's kind of tough to keep track of everything. Um, it goes like this. Where's so now we're getting into all the pieces that have writing on them, the United States. Um, so I'm going to separate those out. So these are the states. <laughs> oh, wow. The detail on this is actually pretty fun. So United, this is the one, this is what we need right now. Um, United. Have I seen the Saturn V at the Kennedy Center? Yes, I have. That was actually the first Saturn V I ever saw in person, and it was absolutely insane. Um, I've talked about it before, but if you guys ever do have a chance to go out there and see it, it's absolutely astounding. Like, they do such a beautiful job of putting that one together. Um, is it like this? Yes, it's like this. Okay. Okay. Um, where's the little black hat? They, they take you through the, um, there it is. They take you through the launch of Apollo 8 and then open the exhibit onto the business end of the Saturn V. Which would be this. Um, and it's just, it's just beautifully displayed. It's really quite astounding. It's pretty awesome. So if you guys are ever in, in the area near Florida, near Kennedy, um, for whatever reason, I would highly recommend uh, taking the time to go. It doesn't, it's not very far. I mean, you go to the visitor center and you get on a bus that takes you out there. It's pretty easy and it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I would, I would highly recommend it. Okay, did I do this right? Yeah, I did, okay. Uh, da -da. Oh, there we go, okay. So there, this this is coming together. We're getting a nice little. Uh... Okay, now we're gonna put states on there. Okay, United. States. <laughs> um, and then one long flat white piece. Sorry, I can't quite do this facing the camera because it's easier to see what I'm doing if I'm looking at it. And then a smaller white piece. There we go. Okay, that's one side done. There's so many pieces to build this up to be the right level. It's just like, couldn't we just make it a piece? But no. 1,969 pieces, guys. 1969. Um, I saw something about visiting Neil Armstrong, something about Wapakoneta. So that's either go to Ohio or go to the Armstrong Center. Um, I have n I've been to neither. I'm actually dying to go to Ohio purely because of the aviation history and the space history that's out there. Because um, I hear there's not that much more um, to Ohio necessarily. But um, yeah, I am dying to go. One of these days I will get there. So that'll be that'll be good. Okay. Um, what? I love these instructions, the one that's like, slide the brown bit towards the yellow bit. Like, is that going under it? It's not, this is not the, uh, oh, mildly confused. What? I guess it does go like that. Okay, and then we put another one of these on top of it. That's odd. Why didn't they just put it together like that? Museum of the Air Force. Yeah, I hear the museum, the Air Force Museum out there in, in um, Ohio is actually quite stunning. That um, and the Cosmosphere in Kansas are very high on my list. I'm actually going to place the brown bit. Uh, yes, I got it. I, I got there. <laughs> um, I'm going to the Kansas Cosmosphere for an event that I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, I tend to book these things. Hi, new viewer from Kansas. Um, I tend to book these things so far in advance that I forget what they are and people like, people will see like, oh, I saw your name on a list for this thing. I'm like, cool. What am I doing? Um, so my, my calendar is just a, a bit of a mess. Oh, golly. Okay. Where's the, seriously, a single little white piece like that. Okay. Eh, or, yeah. Okay. That, I see Pete stalking me out of the corner of my eye. Um, there's that. Oh, another little white hooky bit. And then the long white bit. Okay. 
that and then black hooky bit. I know these things have names, but I like hooky bit. <laughs> um, black hooky bit, black flat bit, black hooky bit. Oh, nope, wrong way. There we go. And then a little, a little ski jump. I'm going to call this one if I can find it. Where's the little, nope, that's a hooky bit. Hmm. This is like my biggest fear with this thing, guys, that I will not, uh, that I will not have, that I'll be missing a piece. It only happened to me once with Ikea. Oh, wait. Okay, no, wait. We're good. We're good. We're good. Here it is. Okay. A little white ramp. Looks like that. Um... So I did see a question a bit ago about my what my favorite planet is. Um, I'd say guesses in the comments, but I can't follow along with the comments enough. Um, I, I, ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Venus. Venus is my favorite planet. I am so fascinated by Venus. Um, I've talked about it a little bit before and any of you guys who've actually met me or seen me give some of my, my talks about sort of like the origin story talks. Um, I like fell in love with space when I discovered, started really looking into Venus um, because I didn't really know anything. I was seven. I didn't really know a whole lot about different planets and how much variety was out there. And then I learned about Venus and I was like, oh my God, this is so neat. And then... Wait, did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. I wasn't paying attention. I was talking. <laughs> um, it was just, you know, Venus is so different, but you can see it in the sky without a telescope. Like to my seven, oh darn it, to my seven year old brain, that was like the coolest thing ever. Um, and I just became fascinated with kind of understanding the planets and the variety that we have in our own backyard and like it's just all so so cool to me um so venus was sort of like my gateway planet as it were i just fell in love and i was just so fascinated by it okay we made this thing um any lectures on the west coast anytime soon no <laughs> um my last i was at uh this isn't really west coast but i was at denver comic-con a couple weeks ago and uh that's the closest i have come to a West Coast tour as of late. Um, no, I don't do a lot of uh, the Gateway Planet. I like that. I mean, it's better. I mean, I like Gateway Planet is better than Gateway Drug for me. So, um, made that okay. <sighs> United. All right. Um, yeah, I don't have any speaking engagements lined up anytime soon, but um, I do post to my website regularly about what I am doing and where I'm going to be, so if you are curious, uh, it's just my full name, um, amyshearetitle.com, that is the best place to find info oh, on where I am going to be. How do these two things go together? Oh, wait. Okay. How could the earth be a triangle? Okay, I know I'm getting better at this, but I'm not getting better at like talking at, to myself on the internet <laughs> while doing it. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Okay, putting this in snappy snap. Oh, golly. Woo, woo. I'll do this facing you guys. Sort of, maybe, maybe. Oh gosh. Wait, why isn't this going? The bottom one. Wait, nope. Hang on. It's not. I want this line up. Line up. Come on. Come on. I believe in you, piece of plastic. Did I, did I miss one? Nope. go ah uh, yay <laughs> okay we're getting there so now we're putting uh, bring this up here for decoration um, 
and we've got states down here. There we go. Patriotic. So patriotic. Um, okay. So one of these, one of these. This is the most, like, yeah. Finicky build. All right, we're going to put this on top. Dinosaur alert. I like dinosaur. Um, it is a challenge to do Lego and keep talking. It's awkward, especially because Pete keeps looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, yeah. The consequence would have been if Russia had gotten to the first, would be a bit at Mars already. <sighs> Big question. <laughs> um, I think the consequence, maybe, Okay, so the question was, sorry, I muttered that because I was reading, trying to read. So from my end, I don't know what it looks like from your guys' end, but um, the chat scrolls pretty quickly, and I don't really have a way of uh, stopping it that I know of. Also, I'm you know trying to do this whole build thing. Um, so I did just see the question fly by of whether I, what I think um, might have been the repercussions or the the kind of fallout, if um, the Soviets had gotten to the moon first, would we be at Mars by now? So I think that's a huge question, because it's, it, there's a lot of speculation about it, mainly because the question behind it to me is whether or not the Soviets were anywhere near getting to the moon when the U.S. landed, um, and the answer to that is no. Um, I'm so glad you guys are entertained by this. <laughs> um, the answer to that is no, but uh, just a knobbly bit. But uh, so let's just pretend that they were. Let's just pretend that like that technology, uh, wait, two of these? Two of these. Uh, okay, gotta redo that again. Okay, um, I think it might have just been a point of like American nationalism and pride to, how do I do this? Oh, yeah, this way. Um, to sort of say, well, we've developed all this technology. We shouldn't put it to waste. Now, of course, the problem with Apollo is that it was custom-built and purpose-built for the moon. You can't... Uh, don't don't believe the movie Capricorn 1, which is a... Uh, I want to say it was 1979. I think it was 10 years after Apollo. Um, Capricorn 1 is a sci-fi movie. It's actually, like, it's a fun one. I, I kind of like it as, like, bad space. Um, but... Uh, it's O.J. Simpson's in it, and I can't remember any of the other actors who are in it, but uh, he and the two other guys are on a crew that lands on Mars, and they're faking the Mars landing, which started lending so much, like, nuttiness to the moon landing hoax theories in the 70s. Um, uh, and then this bit. Okay. That, uh, yeah, it turned out that, like, to fake it properly, the astronauts couldn't come home like the fake version died so they had to actually kill the crew so the the crew ends up having to like escape through the desert um it's not a bad movie it's kind of fun but um yeah so let me make sure this is lined up properly okay there we go i see how this is going to be a pain already to uh merge mate with the first stage um so yeah, Capricorn 1 sees them landing on Mars, fake landing on Mars, obviously, um, in a lunar module, which of course wouldn't work. The lunar module would not be able to withstand landing on Mars. It would burn up in the atmosphere. So don't believe Capricorn 1. Um, had the Soviets gotten to the moon before the United States, it's unlikely that you know we would have been able to repurpose that tech to go to the moon, or go to Mars, um, and whether or not it would have been fiscally responsible at the time to, there's cat hair and everything, um, to then, you know, scrap Apollo or repurpose what we had done, built by that point, um, whatever state it was in, and, uh, you know, repurpose that for Mars, whether that would have been a responsible approach. Um, so yeah. It might, had they landed early enough, depending on when Apollo, like what point in its development Apollo was, at what point in its development Apollo was, that's the correct grammar, um, it's possible, but I still think relatively unlikely. Um, 
Yeah, that's like a that's a fun thought experiment, but it also you got to take into consideration kind of the time frame of the Soviet lunar program, um, which is actually something that I am working on for you guys for Vintage Space. Again, traveling, no time. <laughs> um, two of these, okay. So when you when you look at where the Soviet program was, the Soviets didn't really get full funding and kind of a full um, support behind their lunar program until oh, I need two United. I only have one United. Is that right? Am I missing a United? No? Oh, shoot. Hmm. That's not right. I might be missing a piece? Okay, let's cross that bridge when we get there. Um, this, yeah, Soviets didn't get full funding into their lunar program until far later. I mean, Apollo was, you know, all all gung ho. The U.S. was going for it, beginning in '61. Like that happened. Um, but the Soviet program didn't actually get full support behind its. Oh, there it is. I found it. <laughs> um, behind its lunar program until about '64 or '65, and by then the U.S. program was quite a bit further ahead. Which is why, when you know, we talk about the race, it's debatable how how much really was a race versus um, America just having put the, the energy in early enough to kind of take the lead early on, whether the Soviets ever had a chance. Um, you know, it's possible. There's all, I mean, there's, this is like the most speculative thing in the world. Like, let's be clear, guys. Um, this is just because I have been researching and studying this for like the better part of my adult life, like well over 10, 15 years now. Oh my God, I'm old. Um, oof, why won't this go? Um, Okay, so let's so let's pretend that the Soviets did have the technology developed early enough in its program to oh, viably sorry I'll do this in front of you guys uh, to viably make it to the moon within the 1960s before the end of the decade. Um, it's possible if they were keeping pace with Apollo that it would have been if the Apollo one fire had happened or not not that uh, that disaster but an equivalent disaster right there were obviously issues with the Block One spacecraft. Um, Let's say that NASA had pushed ahead with orbital. Um, I am having issues with this attachment point, the middle one right there. It goes. I have to do that one first, apparently. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So if if NASA had had an early disaster on an Apollo flight that hadn't happened on the ground where they were able to actually take the spacecraft apart and figure out what had gone wrong, um, you know, it's, it's possible that NASA would have had, could have had a disaster in space. Um, and that would have been, f did I miss something? That would have been far, far, far more damaging um, to the agency. And that might have been the thing that would kind of cinch it for the Russians right, or the, the Soviets, um, if they had had that disaster happen, if both, both, um, if both uh, countries had equivalent technology, and then one was hit with a disaster that was, um, de like, that level of devastating in space and seriously set them back, then that might have been what had cinched it. We finished bag nine, bag eight while I was yammering. Okay, so now it looks like this. Um, the British and Commonwealth efforts in space. Okay, so it looks like, oh, shoot. Hang on, hang on. Peace down, peace down, ah! <laughs> uh, okay, what just fell? Did I lose anything else? Hmm, what? Where did that come from? Concern it. I don't even know where this just came off of. Did anyone see it? If you saw it, shout it out in the... Oh, wait, it's right here. <laughs> ha. See, this is going to be the disaster. Okay. So it's looking like this. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be building out sides now. Okay, so we are on to bag nine. So... Bag nine. All right, let's do it. Bob. Not 
scary. Not a scary amount of stuff. Um, British and Com... Okay, so I saw a question pop up. Ooh, we're building... The we are building the skin. Um, so... I'm going to separate these real quick. So we've got some of the, we've got a bunch of these long bits and then we've got a bunch of these uh, curved bits. So this is what makes the skin. Um, so I'm just going to separate these out because we have to make so many of these just so it'll be a little bit easier, especially because I think Pete's napping. I'm amazed he doesn't want to be up here more, but this is just going to make my life a lot easier if I do a quick little uh, separate at the main parts. Um, so the British and Commonwealth Space Programs. Um, oh, someone just said Dinosaur Maroon 969. I'll talk about that in a second because I do own that one as well. Um, I don't actually know a whole lot about the British and Commonwealth programs um, just be by virtue of sort of the stuff that I've been focusing on in my own work. Um, I, I, uh, I think the most I've kind of looked into the British programs and I can't remember actually if I've read this and blogged about it or not. Um, is uh, Operation Backfire, which was the British program to reverse engineer and understand the V2 right after the war. So um, Fun Brown went with the Americans and people like, there was a whole other whack of the, the rocket scientists, including Walter Dornberger, who was uh, Fun Brown's boss. Uh, they went with the British to reverse engineer uh, the V2, but Dornberger was actually never participated in that, he was tried for war crimes um, in London and was sent to a prisoner of war camp for two years in, I want to say it was in Wales. I think it was in Wales, off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, that's, the most I've done is really, is that, and that's just because in my book talks about it and I really had to, um, I had to get into that little bit of the history to kind of place Finn Brown and Dornberger as not in the same place at the end of the war um, and have them both come into the United States separately um, because that's how the history worked. So it was interesting to kind of go into that. Okay, we're taking one of these. Okay, we're going to do, we're gonna do uh, four at the same time. Oh, gosh, let, me, let me try to... I'm just going to try to put more stuff behind here so that you guys can actually see the table. Okay, this is like the most awkward way to sit. Okay, hi. Okay, um, so I don't know too, too much about the British and Commonwealth um, Vintage Space Cadet Club. <laughs> um, I don't know too, too much about the Commonwealth programs, British programs beyond that. It is something that I do want to get into um, eventually. Again, time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I also saw a question about marooned. Or not a question, but a comment about Marooned. Marooned is another great sci-fi movie from ooh, 69. I think it came out in 69. Because um, this was a little space trivia for you. The So it's about a crew that goes up. I forget the name of their space station. If anyone knows it, um, please say it in the comments. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was called. That's gonna bug me now. <laughs> it starts to see it wasn't Capricorn. Maybe it was Capricorn. Anyways, um it was three three guys go up in a Apollo command service module to a space station, kind of like a predecessor to space uh, space lab, Skylab, and uh they get stuck up there. Their spacecraft has some malfunction. I can't remember the details, but um they they are marooned, as the name of the movie would say. And um it ends up being this really interesting, like, rescue thing, um, which was a huge issue. It was, like, how to rescue astronauts from a space station. That became a thing that NASA really had to deal with. Um, and the, the commander of the mission in that movie is named Jim. And I think the movie came out, like, right before Apollo 13 flew. And there is um, the story, I think it might have been in uh, Lost Moon slash Apollo 13, the book... Jim Lovell co-wrote with uh, Jeff Kluger, who's an amazing writer, everyone. Um, if you haven't read that book, go read it. Uh, that she saw that movie and had nightmares because it was an astronaut named Jim being stuck in space and not coming home. So there is, I mean, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, um, there is this really interesting sequence where they use a dinosaur type vehicle to try to recover the crew and there's I think this is the movie where there's a hurricane or a cyclone or something it's not always a Vaz, but, but um 
they have to launch through the eye of the storm in a one-man dinosaur, and I don't think they end up making it. I think Jim has to um, sacrifice himself for his crew, and it is, like, a really creepy but really awesome movie um and just really neat in terms of yeah that's right just okay so it's the sides starting to look like this um it's a very interesting it's an interesting movie it's a fun one it's one of those ones that's like takes takes real science as the jumping off point which is my favorite way to do sci-fi and then kind of goes nuts um but it's far more successful at the real science jumping into crazy than movies like apollo 18 um Show, show of hands, not that you guys not that I can see, but who's seen Apollo 18? It's terrible in, like, the best way. Apollo 18 came out, I want to say, about five years ago. It was billed as, like, found footage of Apollo, of a lost Apollo mission that was supposedly a joint, uh, it was an American mission to the moon to, that never came back because they, for whatever reason, so the government was covering it up, and, uh, yeah, no one knew that that mission even flew because because everyone on the Space Coast just missed the Saturn V launching that day somehow through magic. Um, and, uh, yeah, we follow... And also, like, the whole movie is done, like, found footage through, like, the Hasselblad film. It actually looks really beautiful. Um, it's very, very much like Apollo style. But um, somehow, even though the crew never came back, we have their footage little plot hole there but um it turns out spoiler alert that the uh if you if you haven't seen it and you're dying to i think i think the statute of limitations on spoiling movies has to end um within five years but uh spoiler alert uh, the moon is basically made of spiders that turn into rocks, rocks that turn into spiders and then infect the astronauts' blood and they find a Soviet uh, lander up there. It is just, it's insane. It's like, it's like this movie that starts in Funland and then ends up in Crazy Town. So that's fun. Okay, so we're building these so we can start to see how the curvature, it actually, when you look at the whole thing, the curvature of it is really beautifully done. Um, Okay, so that's it. This is the rock spiders. God, that movie is, I watched it not too long ago with a bunch of my JPL friends who come over for movie nights. Oh, I gotta go do that. Um, and it's, that was a fun one to watch where everyone's just like, all right, we're all people who have, you know, work in, am I doing that right? Yeah, who work in space or have worked in space. I mean, these are, you know, friends of mine who've driven cars on Mars and stuff where I'm just like, oh, this is just so many levels of bad that it's so good. Um, so yeah, it's it's a fun one. I would recommend it with your, ah! Oh, I threw the thing on the floor again. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Peace down, peace down. Oh, I found it. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so we've got these bits, and we're going to stick them onto these bits. So we're starting to see how this thing is coming together. Okay, what other good space movies? Okay, so now we're going to start putting to this... Yep, okay. All right, hang on. I gotta focus for half. Yeah. So it's. So I need to make sure that I'm getting the pattern right on this one, so that I don't have to take it apart and do it again, because that would be annoying. There's so many of the white bits. Interstellar. That's a. That's a. a see, I did it wrong. <laughs> uh, interstellar. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay. Interstellar. Not the best movie. Um, Interstellar. I'm not a huge Matthew McConaughey fan. Um, I also was not a fan of the bookshelf dimension. So that movie was kind of fun, and I kind of like. I thought it was was interesting until the bookshelf dimension, and then it was like, no, um, that's kind of where it lost me. And in fact, so many people told me to watch that movie, but just stop watching it before in the last forty minutes, just to avoid the bookshelf dimension thing. Um, I think before that, it was kind of interesting and and pretty fun, but uh, that's where it lost me. Totally lost me. Okay. Okay, 
Um, Gravity is the other one that people always mention. Um, fun, again, didn't totally love it. Uh, beautiful, though. Beautifully shot movie. Uh, that, that much of it I did really like. So that was fun. Um, the Martian. Uh, watching all the things, trying to go by. Um, okay. I like The Martian. The Martian was fun. I thought the book was far better. I think I feel like I talked about this last time I was building things. I'm also trying to like somewhat stay in frame, but also make it so you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, I thought The Martian was fun. I, I mean, I love Matt Damon. I think he's great. I thought he was great in that. It could have dealt with like without all the other people. <laughs> um, I almost thought, he, like, he was so good. It could have, oh, 16, okay. It could have just been, like, Castaway, comma, Mars edition, and, uh, wait, we gotta do eight of these. Um, and just let it be, like, his narrative. Um, the book is, is I think, more interesting. It kind of gets into more of the, uh, of the science behind it and sort of how he really figured stuff out. One, two, three, four uh five six sorry i can count <laughs> seven and eight so yeah i would recommend the book the book is really fun it kind of goes into all that uh the right stuff classic such such a good movie i love the right stuff apollo 13 will always be my favorite but the right stuff will d always be the very very close second um that movie is just brilliant i just love it okay so here's how the panels are starting to look Nice and smooth. They give it the rocket a really, really beautiful. Uh, yeah, they give it a bat. A really gorgeous, like nice, soft feel. Okay, two, three. Oop. Four. This is fun, isn't it? Um. Six, seven, eight. Okay, and. Watching comments, trying to see any other good questions. From the Earth to the Moon, yes. Um, okay, so I saw that and I saw Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> um, from the Earth to the Moon, yes, that series is awesome. Um, and I think it's what's so interesting about it is that it takes a very different way of looking at Apollo. Like, it's not just here's all the missions, here's the hero stories. Like, it goes through the media, it goes through all the other, like, the wives. It starts to tell the other stories um, in a really interesting way. It kind of takes one element of Apollo and, and really explores that through one mission, which I think is a really nice way to do it. Um, and also, I, like, I love uh, episode, I think it's episode five, Spider. Um, about the building the lunar module and it really gives you a sense of the engineering that went into it and like how much that even though there's no you know we don't really think about the lunar module uh, as a vehicle necessarily separately or the people that build it like we think of astronauts but that episode makes the astronauts just like so secondary to these engineers who put their heart and soul into building this vehicle that would be left on the moon surface and smashed into it. I mean, it's it's beautiful. And uh, I've got friends who, in their engineering degrees, had to watch that as re required viewing because it really highlights the human element of it. Um, and that, I thought, was pretty interesting. So definitely worth watching. Um, it's HBO. I don't know if it's, oh, geez, tell me I didn't drop one of these. Do I have enough? Yeah, okay. Um, no, I'm missing two of them? Hmm. Well, that's annoying. There's no more left in the bag. We might have a hole in the side of the rocket for a bit until I figure out Nothing on the floor. Nope. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I see what I did. Nope, we're good. We're good. See? There we go. Okay. I put white pieces on where I should have black ones on. And now I have my two extra white pieces. Okay. <sighs> All right. So we've got these. This is what they look like. And now we are going to put them on the stage.
Very, very good explanation. <laughs> okay. Just got to figure out how they line up. Oh, okay. Warp. Ah. There we go. That guy's got to go down, so I gotta focus and make sure I'm getting these in the right le levels. Because if they're off, that's gonna be so annoying. Okay, two. All right. There we go. There it is. All right. I love that snapping sound. Uh, oh, October Sky is a great movie. Um, that is such a good movie. That movie is about uh, Homer Hickam, who did actually become a NASA engineer, but sort of his being inspired by Sputnik to build model rockets. He did it. Some of the black ones in the wrong place. It looks like the picture. Oh, you're right. Oh, shoot. Okay, I might fix this one later so that you guys don't have to watch it. Um, is it, am I gonna be able to do that without taking this all off? Let me, let me find out. I'll, I'm gonna fix that one later. Uh, they're upside down. Come on, go, there we go. Yeah, okay, they go up this way. Hang on. Okay, and then this one is the other one that's backwards. We're fixing it. Astronaut Wives Club. Not a huge fan. <laughs> I know, I see people saying they tried to tell me things earlier. Guys, there's so many things flying by the screen right now. I can't actually keep track of it. Um, so, sorry if I miss something. I'm not not paying attention. I'm just not able to follow every step of the build. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We got this. We're good. How's that? Are we all happy? Okay, that's bag nine. Oh my god, we're on bag ten. <gasps> I only have another hour though. We might have to finish this up. We might be able to do one more bag today, and then I have I have to go. But then we could probably finish it in only one more build. Huh. There seems to be a lot happening in bag 10. Um, Turbo Space Program. That is... Whew. Every time. There are 12 bags. So this is the, the third to last. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Got it. Um, third to last bag. Okay. Um, Kerbal. I play Kerbal. <laughs> Form of, uh, Scott Manley. Hello, I'm Scott Manley, who I haven't spoken to in a couple weeks. Oh, I owe Scott an email. Um, Scott Manley builds while I discuss the history of what we're building. Because I suck at Kerbal and I just don't play video games. So, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I've accepted that. So, yeah, it's easier for me to work with someone, someone who has actually, like, knows how to play the game and can do it right and make that more interesting than for you guys to watch me, like, just suck. Um, I'm not good at Kerbal, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, oh, wait, is it the dark ones? No, it's the light ones. Okay. So we're just going to separate these into, we've got another thing, obviously everything in this is in fours. Um, so just separating this into our groups of four, so you can make sure we're getting it right. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. What is that? Oh, a little knobbly bit. Knobbly bit. 
Let's see, three, four. And the other ones. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. What's this? Okay. This looks like it's going to be hinge-tastic. Okay, so we take this. We put this on it. There we go. And then this one. There we go. And then this one. Yeah. And then this thing. And then two of these. Okay, that was tough. That was needlessly difficult. Um, so we're building this little nugget of rocket bit. Okay. How did we do that? <laughs> um, one, two. Help if I actually put them together correctly. Okay, this way, this way. This way, this way, this way. Oh wait, no, these are, oh yeah, okay, we're good. We're good, I got it. Start with this, this. I saw another question, but then I forgot it. Uh, Kerbal. I'll do more Kerbal when Scott and I have time to do more Kerbal. How's that for an answer? Uh, were lunar modules all the same or were they updated? Uh, good question. So I don't know the details of, um, specific, like mission specific details off the top of my head. Um, the most obvious addition, so, oops. um, the most obvious addition is that some of them, the later ones, 15 through 17, had a lunar rover stored in one of the um, the empty bays in the descent stage, which once I actually get to building that, I'll be able to show you what the descent, where the descent stages were and where the extra bays were. Um, so that's one, one thing, but um, they, you also, the other thing, we kind of have to remember, how does this work? Okay, ooh, oh, come on. Are you serious? One? Ah, shoot. Did that just interrupt my feed? That's super annoying. Um, so can you guys kind of see there's like these little attachment points like all the way in there? Um, this is gonna be, I don't know how to, they have to click in and I can't, ooh. Okay, so. Sorry about that interruption, guys. I got a call. I thought that this would override um, that, but apparently it didn't. So I will have to just cancel it if it happens again. Apologies. Um, and that's super annoying because that's gonna break up. That's gonna break up the the archive version. Concern it. Okay. So we filled in uh, some of the holes. We're gonna fill in these ones now. Um, keep this here and we'll put, okay, so we're going to do this again. We're just going to put out four of the things we need. Little knobbly bits. Where's the knobbly bits? One, two, three. Seven. Da -da -da Okay. All right, we've got little benches. And I mean, if someone just said if I would like to collab with Adam Savage about spacesuits. Um, I mean, not sure what exactly about spacesuits, but like, why not? I'd totally love to. Um, you guys, I, I keep seeing things. You guys are like, you should work with these people. It's, um, yeah, it's not, it's not, I don't, you know, actually have a Rolodex of all these people. <laughs> so, uh, I can find, I can, I can work on finding ways to certain people, but it's, you know, I gotta figure out who I actually know. Mostly I just know Pete. Okay. Okay. 
So now we're building the other side of this. So we just have to make sure that it's in the right orientation so that it's not, so that it snaps in super easily and doesn't get lost. Okay. So this is basically the mirror image of what we just did on the other side. Um, this and then two of these. So that's what we're doing. Just this little thing right in here. Um, just gonna follow the directions very, very closely. <sighs> good, good, we're almost there. It's really like the finicky bits at the top here that are painful to build. Um, these things are less so. I mean, they're still like really finicky little bits. Um, did they ever do EVA to get stuff from the service module? I saw that pop up real quick. I don't know if there was um, if there was more to that question. If there was, I apologize, but I'll answer the part that I saw. Um, yes, they did actually on Apollo's uh, 15, 16, 17. There were a uh, deep space EVA done by the command module pilot um, to retrieve film canisters from the sim bay, which was on the service module. Um, so it was Al Warden, uh, Ken Mattingly, and oh my gosh, Ron Evans. No, he was 14. Who did it on 17? Oh, this is gonna bug me. Why can't I remember that off the top of my head? That's so annoying. No, it was Ron Evans. Wasn't it Ron Evans on 17? Oh my God, I have to look this up. This is driving me crazy. Um, so they, they recovered these sim bays. I actually have videos on on my Facebook page um, of that those Deep Space EVAs. And actually, I don't want to get up and get it, but I have a signed picture from Al Warden of him. It was Evans, yes. Okay, good. I'm not nuts. <laughs> it was Ed Mitchell on 14, not Ron Evans. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. So I do actually have a signed picture of Al Warden. It's basically like Al Warden's butt <laughs> um, on... Uh, doing that deep space EVA on 15. It's like, though that footage to me is just crazy because that's when I think like, going to the moon is one thing, but like being, uh, sorry, trying to, yeah. But um, have like, doing an EVA between the earth and the moon, you are, you know, if it's on average a quarter million miles to the moon, you're like over 100,000 miles from the closest anything like I just oh how could you what, could you look around and just nothing um oh here we go there's just nothing there there's nothing to see the you know the earth is this big the moon is this big or you know they're about the same just like that would be nuts to me nuts and that's when I think about that I'm just like oh my god oh my god I can't do it can't can't do space um but I love it I love that stuff so Yes, three, three deep space EVAs. Um, really, really neat. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, okay, now we're just gonna finish out these gaps right here. Um, so just pop these together. So we're just putting this, the little like fence bits onto a flat piece. I just saw someone mention uh, Moon with Sam Rockwell. That movie's amazing, okay? If anybody hasn't seen it, go watch it. Like, go find a way to watch it. And uh, if you are watching it with someone who hasn't seen it, don't ruin it. That movie, you know, every once in a while, there's like a book that I read or a movie that I see that I wish I could see for the first time again. Um, and Moon is definitely one of those. I wish I didn't know the ending so I could see it again and, uh, and have that moment of like, oh my god, but it is so, oh, I want to watch it again, maybe I'll do that tonight. That movie is so good, and it's one of those things, um, uh, oh shoot, oh, did I do that wrong? Did I do one of these wrong? Why do I have five holes? Oh, I know what I did wrong, okay, we're good, we're good. Um... I forgot two pieces last time. Okay. 
So, um, yeah, Moon. That movie is... And what's amazing, too, is that it's uh, it's basically just Sam Rockwell. Like, it's basically just one one person for the duration of the movie. And it is compelling. It is captivating. It is so good. Um, strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. Okay, so now we got to get... <laughs> now we have to get these in here yeah not totally gonna fit I don't think is this wait really oh shoot oh there is that okay Is it just me or does that not fit? Did I miss something? Oh, I did miss something, didn't I? Concern it. Okay, hang on. Hang on, I gotta go back and look at something. I think I missed a step. Um, yep, I missed something. Okay, we're good. I figured it out. I missed these underneath this to get it to be the right distance out. was wondering what was going on with that. Okay, that makes more sense now. We're good. We're good. Just a bit of backtracking. Two, three, four. Okay. Hello. Okay, so now this will fit. Oh, now that fits nice and easy. Just like the hair color. So we're putting that in. So now we're getting, we're starting to get the, uh, the tapering towards the third stage. I wonder if the lunar module fits in the adapter in this set. I actually have no idea. There we go. Okay. So it's starting to look like a rocket. Uh, oh, there's like a movie seat bench. Look, it's like a, it's like a, it's like theater seats. <laughs> There's little two people in it. Not actually, but it looks like it could take two people. Okay, so we're going to stick these on the blue bits. Mm. Okay. There we go. Ow. I legoed myself together. <laughs> um, three... Four. Okay, so we've got this, and then we've got one more of these round, rounded bits. And four of these flat bits. Okay, so we're gonna put our benches up here be quite the viewing location in a Saturn V, right? Yes, my AC just went on, guys. <laughs> it's uh, it's not super loud. When I lived in Arizona, the AC in that apartment was so, so loud. Um, it, uh, I actually couldn't put it on when I, when I was doing videos. Um, Um, so every time I did a video or a live stream, um, which I was doing the weekly space hangouts with Fraser Kane and the crew at Universe Today at the time, I had to have my AC off. And anyone who knows about uh, <sighs> temperatures in Phoenix, it was so bloody hot. Um, it was just obscene. I mean, it was like 115 was not abnormal for mid-summer. And it was just like, you know, this ah, little apartment, terrible AC. Not even, like, just, you know, a unit in the main room that didn't totally cool the bedroom. It was just, it was ridiculous. There it is. Um, so, yeah, those were some really frustrating live streams on the count of not... And, the of course, the AC unit um, was right above the table that was my desk. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. Okay, and then we... 
Wait. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so that's so we're starting to see how they're starting to curve a little bit. And now we're taking more of these. So we've got, this is like the favorite, is the little blue pieces. And then two of these curved black pieces over top to give you the curvature of the rocket. Um, I'm not from New Brunswick. I am from, I'm from Canada though. I am from Toronto. Um, and I don't think I've ever been out to New Brunswick, come to think of it. I've been to Nova Scotia a bunch. Uh, I used to live out there for undergrad. Uh, oh, Soviet Lunacod. So I did see a question about Soviet moon rovers. Soviet rovers. I do have some Soviet rover stuff coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, am I doing this right? I don't know this way. Okay. Um, the Soviet Lunacod rovers. I got a video on them that I'm going to... If you guys want to... If you guys search Lunacod on my channel, you'll find it. If it exists. If not, it might only be a... Um, an article that I should definitely turn into a video. Look, it's, uh, we're going towards the uh, adapter. I know, this is so intricate, eh? Um, the Lunacod rovers were pretty, pretty impressive, pretty amazing, um, and just like a great example of like Soviet brute force. Um, of just like, we want to go drive on the moon, so just go drive on the moon. They like drove into craters and like didn't really take as much care as, as the uh, the Americans did with rovers. Um, really, really interesting. And they got a lot of neat stuff done and really beautiful pictures. I love that stuff. So that'll, if I haven't done a video on that, that'll come up soon because I know I've written an article about it. I have this whole like massive, we're putting the engines together, the J2 engines. Um, I have this massive group of articles that I've written that I haven't ever turned into videos because I wasn't doing YouTube at the time. And I really got to remember that these are things that are worth a revisit because they're so cool. Um, I've done all the work, might as well make a video of it, eh? So that'll happen. Okay. So we're putting the engines together. They're starting to look like that. Hi from Germany. <laughs> I need to go back to Germany. I like Germany. It was fun. I haven't spent a lot of time out there, but I love Germany. It's beautiful. Um, okay. That, and then we've got... Alright, there's our little engines. Look how cute. Northern Ireland. I love Ireland. I spent, I spent like, two summers out in Ireland. Um, beautiful, beautiful country. You guys are from everywhere. That's awesome. Oh, hi, Canada. Hi, Hungary. Dresden. Oh, my God. Oh, New Zealand. Awesome. So many places I want to go. It's so cool that you guys come, or are, are so many interesting spots, so many places everywhere. And Brazil and Sweden. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for coming to say hi, guys. Finland. I've always wanted to go to Finland, too. One of these days, one of these days I will just travel the world somehow. Okay. We've got our second stage engines done. Our second stage is done. <sighs> okay. And now we have to connect it to the first stage. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay. I'm going to stick this on the chair here so that you guys can kind of see it. So this is how it's going to work. We've got those little red bits have, have like hooks sticking up on them. And then these things have little knobbly bars that the hooks are gonna grab onto. So this is not how stages were mated, um, but I think there's a video in how stages were mated. They were explosive bolts so they could separate with staging. Uh, this thankfully does not have explosive parts, but um, okay, I have to make, Oh my god, this is terrifying. Oh my god, I got one. I got, oh shoot. Ah, hang on. I'm dislodging all the, uh, I'm dislodging all these upper pieces right now. Ah, hang on. I popped one off. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Mm. 
Ready? Ready? I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh. Mm, why? Okay, all of these top bits are just like snapping right off every time I put any pressure on them. Ah, shoot. I broke one of the top bits off. Oh, shoot. Damn it. Mm, there we go. Hang on. Hang on. There. Wait, no. Oh, God damn. Okay. One of the benches fell off on the inside and I cannot get it back on with all the stuff in. All right. There it is. Nope, I dropped it. Damn. Oh, this is so annoying. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, nope, nope. Ooh. There it is, okay, okay, and snap. Okay, we're good, we're good, all right. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay. So, should this go in super easily? I feel like it's still a fair bit of force. Okay, that one's lined up. I mean, oh my God. This is... <laughs> this just came off. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is... I'm not having any luck with this right now. It's got to go straight on. I know it's going, it's going straight on. I just feel like the force of me pushing on it is not helping. Okay. Every single time, I must be hitting it at slight angle. Okay, okay, I'm trying to do this for you guys to see it, but I think I just gotta, I think I just gotta stand up. Okay, let's see if I can make this happen. Okay, that one's lined up, that one's lined up, that one's lined up, ah! Working on it. Seriously, this piece just fell off again. <laughs> Um, what do you guys think? Should there not be a ton of force to get this thing together? Who, uh, two of the fins, I took two of the fins off because I'm lying it down on my, on my table right now to store it. Um, it needs a firm push. Okay, see, the firm push is the bit that's making me a little bit nervous because I feel like if it's not... Oh, come on. Well, you know what? <laughs> At least with these pieces off, I can see what I'm doing. We got two... Seriously, all four of these pieces just fell off, but it's together. <laughs> well, this is convenient. I can show you guys the inside. Um, okay, I did it. And you can see where they're attached now. Um, that's so funny that all four of these pieces just fell off when I pushed it down. Um, so that's a thing that happened. But now it's together. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick these back on here. I was like this now. Ooh. Oh my god. There we go. Does that not want to go now? Come on, don't be a jerk. Wait, I think I, huh? I might have to take a step back and figure out why, why these are not going on smoothly. Weird, okay. I'm gonna look at this not live on the internet. 
It's clearly Apollo 13. Okay, so... Yeah, I gotta figure out why those four pieces just popped off at the same time. I'm gonna go do that. But I'm not, I know, so I think I, I think I have a piece on backwards and that's what's doing it. So I'm gonna go look at that, not live on the eh, internet. <laughs> um, and then I gotta go, but we'll be able to finish this. I think we've only got two more bags. So I'm gonna do one final build uh, this week. This week is busy, so probably next Monday, probably around the same time. Um, we'll start around one Pacific time, because that's the time zone I'm in, and that's the time zone that makes sense for me to plan my schedule in. Okay, so um, thank you guys for joining me for this hour and a half live stream that got cut in the middle. I'm really sorry, that's super annoying. Um, I don't know if I can fix that. I might download both of them and put them back up archived in one go. Um, but thank you guys for sticking around and for um, asking some pretty good questions about space and mostly about movies today. Um, so there will be an episode, another episode of Vintage Space coming up uh, this week. I'm going to shoot some stuff tomorrow and then we'll be back to a more regular schedule. Um, so that's fun. If you guys do want to see more of my kind of daily stuff, the best place to find me is uh, Twitter and Instagram, uh, AST Vintage Space on both of those. Um, of course, the blog is at Discover Magazine. It's an uh, annoyingly long URL to say. It's uh, blogs.discovermagazine.com slash vintage space. Um, this is the Lego Saturn V kit. No promotion. I, I was gifted this by a lovely fan, Chris. Thank you again, even though it's just making me look ridiculous on the internet. Um, and of course, if you guys do want to help me uh, continue making good vintage space content, I do have a Patreon um, that you can donate to. Um, if you want to become a moderator on the channel, that's a way to do it. Um, so check that out. There's links for all that stuff in the description below. Um, so that's it. I will leave it at that for now, and I'm going to figure out why this is not snapping together um and hopefully i will have fixed it <laughs> yeah chris you're not torturing me i saw that go by um i will have fixed it before the next build and then we will um we'll have one more session and be done and yay then i'll have an awesome new saturn 5 to have in the background and i'm gonna compare it to the old one that is super broken um in the last one to show you guys how much bigger this thing is um and i will tweet a picture and put a picture on instagram once i fig figure this out um okay Thanks so much for coming to hang out, guys. Really appreciate it, as always. And, um, of course, leave me questions, comments, anything you'd like to see covered in future episodes in the comment section below. Um, and I will be seeing you guys next time. Okay, bye.